A hand grabbed Ray's arm, dragged him to his feet and hustled him from the alley towards the town. It was only when they were running down Vermin Street that Ray's head cleared enough to recognise the little guy from Subvert. Where are we going? My place, before those big bullies come after us. Now move. He bundled Ray along until they were approaching the junction with Moss Lane, where after a quick glance back up the street, he pulled a large rusty key from his pocket, opened a nondescript wooden gate and pushed Ray through. They were in a small moonlit courtyard in the middle of a tiny square of old houses. The little man locked the gate behind them and swaggered to the nearest house. Come in, he said, as he unlocked the front door and used a cheap cigarette lighter to light an oil lamp. Ray followed him into a diminutive room that would have felt even more cramped had it contained anything more than a three-legged stool, a beaten-up chair with a cracked leather seat and a beanbag, all standing on a threadbare rug that might have once been red. It smelled musty and dusty, with an underlying pom, as if something had died there some time ago. Ray could hardly complain. His own kitchen stank as much. Thanks for helping out back there, said the little man, though there's no need. I had the situation well in hand. I'm Kevin Crumb, by the way. Most people just call me Kev. You? Ray paused. Anonymity might be his best policy if Alex had given his name to the cops. Memory carried him back to his first day at senior school and Mr Marks, the English teacher, asking for his first name. Ray, sir, he replied. Did you say Razor boy? The class had sniggered and the nickname had stuck until an unfortunate incident on the rugby pitch when his repeated panic in the face of the opposition's front row had cost the match. After that, his schoolmates just called him Wimpy Hums. Call me Ishmael, Kev smirked. What? No, it's Razor, Ray declared, already feeling a little bolder. Welcome to my pad, Razor, said Kev, 